Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Torqued. So the crashing issue that I was getting at the end of last episode turns out was caused by a interaction between the crafting stations from Tinker's Construct, these things, and mechanism. Apparently if you craft any mechanism stuff inside of them, there's a chance of it crashing. So don't. <laughs> if it's a mechanism, just use a normal crafting table. Alright, so I've done a pretty massive amount of stuff between last episode and this one. I knew I needed to get a lot of things ready for this episode if I want to be able to do oil power, which I do. So I've gone ahead and done it. Uh, forget this stuff for now, this is just stuff for the actual oil generators and oil presses themselves. But before that, in getting all the stuff ready for the empower, um, I built all the machines needed to make the dilithium crystal, I built all the machines needed to make the reinforced alloy, and the display stands, and the power cell, and all, all sorts of things. So, let me show you what I've done. So, I think last time, I don't remember whether the metallurgic infuser was in place last time, I think I did get that in, in the last episode, but I definitely didn't have the enrichment chamber, the chemical stable, uh, crystallizer, chemical oxidizer, or the charger. So, I made all of these, it took a long, long time. Dear God, so many things to make. Uh, so the enrichment chamber, yeah, so the enrichment chamber, I believe, was for the compressed redstone, which I needed for something. I made tons of stuff to the metallurgic infuser including reinforced alloy. I don't think I need that, but it's always good to have extra. These chemical crystallizers and oxidizers are going to be used in this episode to make the dilithium crystal. And this charger was to make the... The simple power cell needed a fluix block, and to make fluix block I needed fluix crystals, and to make fluix crystals I needed charged certus quartz, and to charge certus quartz I needed to put them in the charger. So I crafted the charger and charged them and made all the other stuff and blah blah blah. But lots and lots of crafting. That's far from the end of what I've done though. I put the... yeah... what the hell? Oh there we go. That was odd. The nodes weren't appearing. Yeah, I made the graphite electrodes for the arc furnace. And the reason for that is because the Empower requires two Osmeridium ingots. And Osmeridium can only be made in the Arc Furnace. Exclusive to the Arc Furnace. So one Osmium ingot, which is easy, I've got tons of that, plus one Iridium dust, which in my case came from rock hounding, equals a Osmeridium ingot. I thought that'd be pretty straightforward, right? <laughs> it was not. I had all the ingredients to make it, but the big problem is that this Arc Furnace is unbelievably power hungry. It is power hungry on a scale that I did not think was even possible. So, it holds 64,000 RF, as you can see at the top there. When I put in the ingot and the dust to make just one Osmeridium ingot, the power just basically went to zero, like, instantly. It took every single ounce of my power system, and even then, it was moving so slow that it was literally gonna take, I'm pretty sure, this is not an exaggeration, literally at least an hour just to make one ingot. It was just ruining my power system, and it was gonna take so long I was actually considering just leaving my computer on for like five hours or something and coming back to it when they were done. But I thought, no, okay, you know what, let's try something else. Let's, oh, god. Sometimes when I first load into the game, the conveyor belts don't display properly. They're not actually like this, it's just a visual bug. Oh yeah, I don't think I ever explained, I did install the second crusher here. Yep, just use it for extra things, mostly making gravel. Sometimes other things. I don't know when that's going to fix itself. Anyway, yes, yeah, so I needed to upgrade the power system. Obviously, though, the real, real upgrade to the power system is going to be the canola oil generation. So I needed something that wouldn't be too costly, something that wouldn't take too long. So what I ended up doing is, if you remember a long time ago, I mentioned that the thermoelectric generators that I use generate their power based off, on, based off the temperature difference between the two fluids. I was using water and lava, which were kind of the crappiest things you could use. Well, don't mind the fires. Um, I replaced most of it with gelid cryothium for the cool stuff and liquid pyrothium for the hot stuff. 
and I think that makes it generate twice the power. So that was a good upgrade, but that produced another problem. I was generating significantly more power, but I was still using low voltage connectors, which was not going to work. So I replaced everything with high voltage wires. So that's why if you notice all these wires look different, different color, bigger connectors, all that good stuff. So now everything is high voltage. So now our limit at the moment is by far power generation and not power transmission. So that helped significantly with the arc furnace. It didn't make it fast, but it made it much, much faster. To the point where it took, I don't know, maybe like 20 minutes <laughs> to do one ingot. It was at least reasonable, kind of. Okay, um, I think that's it. Arc furnace, all those machines, yes. Oh, uh, one more thing that I don't think I mentioned. Although I think I actually did this a while ago, I just forgot to mention it before. Um, I did end up connecting a chest and transferring everything out of the chemical extractor. Ah, we're out of sin gas again. Need to put more coal in this thing. But yeah, I ended up extracting from it because it turns out that these buffers in here, I was wondering whether they can fill up. It turns out they can. They have a max of 64. Each one can only hold 64 dust. Uh, thankfully, though, what happens after it reaches that limit is it, it doesn't just stop. It doesn't stop working. It doesn't fill up. Instead, it kind of just voids the excess. So it just throws away everything extra. So I just put a chest here and just started transferring it all here. You can see it's already gotten pretty filled up, just to make sure nothing went to waste. Look at all his platinum. Beautiful stuff. Let me see how much coal I have. Oh wow, okay, I got a lot of coal. I'm gonna go fill this thing up with some more coal so we can make some more sin gas. 703. Okay. Whew. A lot of stuff. What's this for? Ah, uh, right, the display stands. Right, so I got a bunch of stuff together to make the... the uh, canola presses and the canola generators. Or oil generators, I guess they're technically called. So I've never used this stuff before. I don't know how fast it is, so I'm not sure exactly how many to make, but I'm going to start out with 10 canola presses. That's going to make the canola oil from the canola. It's pretty cheap, actually. Just canola and ori crystals, advanced coils, and, and that stuff's pretty cheap. And then I'm going to make 16 oil generators. This one's a bit more expensive. Uh, obsidian, a little bit tough for me because of how much how much time it takes to generate those. Also needed a bunch of vats, and vats needed a bunch of cauldrons, and each cauldron takes a ton of iron. So iron, some steel here. Chimera blocks easy. Fluid tank, some more iron. So basically just like lots of iron. I had to go mining once or twice to get more iron for all this stuff. But we have enough stuff for 16 oil generators and 10 canola presses. And these display stands are going to be uh, used for the Empower. So the Empower takes one display stand for its recipe on its own. And the Empower also needs four display stands physically placed around it to make it actually work. So I'm going to need five in total. Um, so I got all of that and I have everything ready to make the Empower, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I've got everything except the Dilithium Crystal. I haven't done that yet. Let's actually, let's sleep. I should have said it today, quicker. So let's see how that's gonna work. Haven't done it yet. The whole process starts with turning Lithium from rock hounding into Mechanism Lithium. Um, lithium... Hello. I don't know if I ever explained that you can do this, by the way. If you're searching in in uh, JEI, that's what this is called, this searches just enough items. If you double-click this, it turns it yellow, and you whatever you type in will be highlighted. Or grayed out if it doesn't match. So like, I don't know, phosphorus? It just highlights the phosphorus in whatever inventories you're looking at. Pretty handy if you're trying to find something in a vast chest. Oh, you know what? There's one other thing I actually forgot to mention. I set up a battery bank. Yeah, I made a bunch of high voltage capacitors. Uh, they're just simply batteries, just to make sure that I, if I'm not using a lot of the energy, I can have a pretty big buffer. 
I don't know what each one holds. So that's 1.5 million. So probably like 4 or 5 million in total. And I've got 6 of them. So I've got a pretty good buffer. So yeah, all the power generation comes up here. It all goes to the batteries, and then all the batteries can extract out to the main line. And I also disconnected this. Just because... I don't know. I mean, who cares? <laughs> this water wheel is so irrelevant now. Not worth it. I'm still going to leave it there, though. It looks cool. Okay. So, we can use the lithium dust in, what, the chemical oxidizer, and it will make lithium. Liquid lithium. Chemical oxidizer. So let's throw one in, see what happens. A hundred lithium. How much do I need? I'm gonna... Hmm. I'll throw in enough for a thousand. I mean, it's not saying these are millibuckets, so I don't know if a thousand is one bucket, or if it's just mechanism units. Uh, but anyway, the chemical crystallizer should be able to crystallize the lithium. So I suppose we could... Can we tell it to, like, output automatically? How do we get the lithium out? Aha, uh -huh, there we go. Yeah, so I just looked it up on the wiki. The chemical oxidizer, uh, I guess it doesn't have configurable sides. It seems like it just straight up outputs what it makes to the right. So I just needed to move the chemical crystallizer to the right of the oxidizer. And there we go. We got some lithium dust. All right, and now with this lithium dust, we should be able to throw it into the atomic reconstructor. It's going to be very costly on power. I think it's 250,000 RF to turn one piece. Whoops. What the heck did I just do? Uh, I think I just refilled incredibly fast because I've got the HV wire connectors, but yeah, pretty sure that's very expensive. Where is it? I don't get it. I don't see it. Oh, it's going into my mi- ah, it's going into my mining backpack. <laughs> that makes sense. Well, I'm just gonna transform all of it, if I can. You see it only does one at a time. Gotta wait to refill. Okay. Now that we have that, we can finally put it into the crystallizer. So I think it goes into the input hatch, right? Um, oh, it might be off. There we go. That looks good. Is it? Yep, we can see the crystals in there. Stuff's happening. Oh, it's already made a couple. Yeah, so there's some pretty cool animations with these big multi-block structures. And six. All done. And with that, we should be able to make an empower. With all of this stuff. Plus a display stand, just gonna make all five. And what the heck, let's make the canola presses. And the oil generators. So, empower. There we go. Finally got it. So, let's test this stuff out, huh? Let's see how it all works, how fast it works. Like the canola press, for example, does it take power? I'm assuming yes. Yeah. Alright, I wonder how fast it is. Let's set it up real quick. Got some power here. So, canola press. Let's grab some connectors. God, I 
love how that just instantly fills up because the power transfers so fast. Let's put a couple pieces of canola in it. Oh, that's pretty fast. Yeah, that's not going to take long at all to make a bucket's worth. Thing is, I don't know how fast it's going to burn. But I'll just throw a bunch more in here. Let it go, let it do its thing. Let let it do its thing. Now let's try a generator. That's not a generator. And I got a bucket here. Okay. So... Yeah, I think my 10 canola presses are actually going to be fine. It looks like one bucket is going to last a lot longer than it took to make it. Definitely. Yeah, it's burning it far slower than it takes to... than the time it takes to make it. Which is good. But you can see at its base it does 40 RF per tick, which is... Eh, it's not that good. It's really not. That's... At this point, that's a little bit less than what one of my thermoelectric things does now that I've got the jelly cryothium and the pyrothium stuff. But remember, we're going to empower it. So let's see how much power it generates when we upgrade it. So crystallized canola seed. Okay, so we're going to need crystallized canola seeds, which is going to allow us to make the better oil. And then, in addition to that, the powered canola seeds to turn it into even better oil. So. We're gonna have to put it down. And... Let's grab some seeds. Let's go put them in the atomic reconstructor. I'm guessing it's gonna do maybe plus 40 and then plus 40. So from 40 to 80, then maybe to 120. I really don't need so many. Why do I keep pressing F? So if we plop these seeds into here, and the oil should transform it. Oh, I forgot a step. Before we can throw the seeds in it to transform it, we need to turn it from canola oil into oil in a fermenting barrel. Whoops. Okay, how hard is that to make? That sounds like it's going to be kind of slow, unfortunately, but we'll see. Woods, anori, canola, wood casing, which is just... more wood. Alright, so I made 32 fermenting barrels. It looks like they ferment at a, a pretty reasonable speed, not super fast, definitely not as fast as the canola press presses, but yeah, reasonably fast. Perhaps as fast as the generator consumes it. Oh, that's not quite a bucket's worth. Whoops. Well, you can actually see how fast it is here. That's how long it takes for how much? I think 80? Yeah, for 80 millibuckets. So, now we've turned canola oil into oil. Now, we should be able to take that and just replace it. Actually, I want to see how much power this makes. I'm curious. Ooh, so just turning it into oil makes 100 RF per tick. That's a huge difference. Oh, man. And that's only basically one power up. We're still going to improve it two more times. Alright, I'm going to wait until that's got another bucket full. Alright, so a bucket of oil with a crystallized canola seed put into it should... There we go, transform. Into crystallized oil bucket. Now, let's put this in. Oh, <laughs> good, it finally updated. 200 RF per tick, oh my god. God. So from 40 to 100 to 200, and we're not even done yet. I don't quite have a bucket full. One sec. Let me just put some more of that in here. 
Okay, so now let's go for the final tier using the Empower. And God, I know this is ugly, but I believe it goes something like this. Empower in the center, the four display stands all around it. Not sure if the distance between the two matters, so hopefully I've got this right. And how it works is you put the crystallized canola seed in the center, and then you put normal canola seeds on the outside on each pedestal. And there we go. Now it's empowered. I think you have to what, click it with an open hand? Yeah. So now I have an empowered canola seed. Let's get a little bit more of this. So we have one bucket. There we go. Okay. So now if we take a bucket of oil and put a crystallized canola seed in it, it transforms. And then if we put an empowered canola seed, it transforms once again. So that's the final form. That's the end result we want. And I've unfortunately got to wait for this to burn all the way out before I can fill it up. I'm guessing 300 RF per tick. Alright, it's got to burn through the old one. And... 350. That's beautiful. That 350 is probably roughly, maybe slightly less, or roughly around what I'm making in my entire thermoelectric room down there. And that's just out of one generator, and I've got the stuff to make six, or the stuff to put into place 16 generators, and of course I could make more if I wanted to. This is going to be fantastic. This is going to solve all my power problems for quite a while. All right, so there's the uh, the prototype, basically. Now I just got to figure out where to put it and start setting some stuff up, because obviously I want to automate the whole process. Which, what does that mean? It means, obviously, we need to automate getting canola into the canola press. We need to automate getting it then into the fermenting barrel. That's the easy part. But then we need to dispense it. So we need some sort of fluid placer to dispense it. And then... We need an automatic way of using the Atomic Reconstructor, so we need something to like place canola seeds in the Atomic Reconstructor, activate it, turn it into crystallized canola seeds, automatically drop it into the oil from the uh, the fluid placer, and then also something that can automatically do the empower, and also drop that in after, and then something to take it and put it into the generator. So, it's going to be a lot of work. Uh, I'm not quite sure how this is going to work, but uh, let me get started on a place to put this stuff. All right, I've got everything together to make another atomic reconstructor, since this one's going to be purely for the canola generator kind of chain. So I've got one of those, and I also have a fluid collector and fluid placer, which we're going to need to place the oil in the world. And then after we turn it into the right oil that we want, we're going to want the fluid collector to collect it and send it to the generator. Also, a couple more things that I realized I didn't mention that I did. I did some replanting of the trees. Since I cut down so much, there were starting to be some holes. So I just did some replanting. And this one, this was a happy accident. So this tree ended up kind of growing over the path, sort of. And I thought it'd be really neat if you could actually walk underneath the tree. So the old path used to just go straight up ahead. And then this was the wood. So to make it so that you could actually go under it, I just kind of moved the path over to the right, one block. And now you can. Yeah, it's really neat. Mostly I think I did it over there and also a bit here. Planted that. Planted these. Yeah, looks a bit more foresty. Also, I also put something to help clean up the fur balls I kept accumulating in here with Linton, Skitty, and Mewtwo. So I actually dug the service tunnel. That's over there. I dug it under, right underneath. You see that hairball just disappeared? I dug it right underneath here, and then right underneath I put a uh, remote... What's it called? Remote collector? From Actually Editions. The same one I used at the mob farm. So it picks up all the hairballs, and I just decided to transfer them over here. So we've got 113 hairballs collected. It's probably a name tag in there. Most likely. So I should be able to name the dogs when I want to. But that's going to have to wait. Back to figuring out where to put the generators. Alright, so I think I'm going to put it underground, and I'm going to locate it close to the farm and close to the seeds and all that stuff, because it's all stored here, so might as well put it close to the source. 
It's going to be some sort of a service tunnel here. Well, I mean, it, it is connected to the service tunnels down here, but there's going to be a service tunnel access here. So this is the service tunnel. This is connects to the main one where the water and all this stuff comes into the farm. It's this little offshoot. And this whole room is going to be where the where the magic happens. Obviously it's hideous. And it's got holes in it. And it's hideous. Uh, but I'm not going to fix it up just yet. Because there's going to be a much faster way to make a room like this look proper than I could do right now. There is a wand. What's it called? Wand of what? Like replacement? Displacement? No. Cash rings. Swapping. Yeah, so there's the swapping wand. Not sure how easy this would be to make. Oh, it requires a nether star, okay. And gas tears, I don't know if I can get that yet, but it's something I'd like to work towards because if I wanted to replace all the walls, ceiling and the walls and the floor and everything with a new type of block, which I do, at the moment I would have to excavate everything one block out in every direction and then fill it in with stuff. But with something like the swapping wand, I can just take the blocks that are already there and just swap them with a different type of block from my inventory. So that would be pretty handy. That'd be super handy. So I think I'm going to wait for that. Alright, let me start getting some stuff into place. Alright, so I've set up a separate XNet network down there, and I've run it using a yellow network cable and yellow connectors instead of the default blue ones. Uh, that way they don't connect, since they're both going very close to each other. I don't want them to connect, I want them to be completely separate. Now my plan was to just have the yellow connector to be from this drawer controller down down to here, and then the rest of this was going to be blue. But it turns out if this is yellow, I, I guess everything has to be yellow? I guess everything has to be the same color or something like that. Because when I made this all blue, none of these canola presses were showing up on the network. It's only when I made them yellow that they appeared. So I had to go... I had to go getting a bunch of daisies to try to <laughs> make everything yellow. That's how you make them, by the way. So the default is a network cable. If you just mix it, like, the default blue network cable with a yellow, dandelion yellow, turns it yellow. Same for red and some other colors. So anyway, this is the first step. The canola presses are going to be taking lots of canola. So let's set those up. So I've got the drawer controller here. Let's make a new item channel. So from the drawer controller, we're going to extract... Let me just disable this. Extract a stack all the time. Let's put a filter in here for canola. And we're going to insert into every one of these. All right, that should do it. So let's enable this. And everything should be full. We're almost full. Oh, that definitely just got some. There we go. Yep, just took a second. Um, wait, what? Oh, right, these need power, I forgot. Yeah, so I need to hook these up to power. But yeah, they're all filled with canola. Alright, now I've got all the fermenting barrels set up. So now I'm extracting. I've got a fluid channel and I'm extracting from every single canola press and inserting into every fermenting barrel. So let's turn that on. Should work. Yep, they're filling up. Remember it does one transfer every 20 ticks, so every second, so it takes a little bit until it gets more canola oil. But yeah, it's working great. All the tanks are almost filled up. Okay, so now we have the oil. Now we can extract the oil out of here. Speaking of which, I wonder if I have to put a filter for what I extract. If I just extract out of one of these fermenting barrels, do I only get the product? Like only the oil, or could it possibly extract the canola oil as well? Don't know, but it's an easy fix if it turns into a problem. But uh, right, so this is where things get a little bit more, actually a lot more complicated. This is the easy part, we're producing the oil, but now we need to take the oil and we need to place it. I think I was actually getting ahead of myself by trying to go into the fluid placing just right away. I think what I should do is focus on kind of the other track. We have two tracks. One is processing the stuff into oil that's going on on this side of the room. And then the other is processing the seeds because we need a supply of both types of seeds. 
we need to have an equal amount, ideally, of crystallized canola seeds and empowered canola seeds. So let me get that working, and then once I have a good supply of seeds going on on this side of the room and the oil on that side, then I'll work on kind of combining the two and outputting them to the generators. So I'm thinking seeds go here, and then perhaps the combining happens on this end of the wall, and then it gets maybe distributed to the generators in the center of the room. I think that might look good. Anyway, I need to do some testing with how this is going to work with the seeds. So step one, how do we get the atomic reconstructor to automatically do what we want it to do intelligently? Now, I've never messed around with the logic in XNet, but I'm about to do that. So I've got a connector here on the atomic reconstructor. I have, let me disable this. I have the atomic reconstructor set to activate the laser when it receives a redstone pulse. I think... I think that this can output a redstone pulse. I can set it to output mode. Output redstone of 15, which is the max, every second. So if this does what I think it's going to do, it should make it pulse every second. Why did it stop? Right, so I'm not sure what was happening before, but yeah, it does, it does indeed look like it's just simply not a pulse. Although again, I don't understand what the number of ticks for each operation matters. If it's not a pulse, it's constant, so there's doesn't seem to matter how often you update it. Maybe that actually might determine how often it checks the conditions. So I've never messed with these before, but these are basically conditions in which it's enabled. So using logic, you can use logic as a sensor to set certain colors. So for example, I could set like, I don't know, if there's 10 of this item in here, set this color to red, and then I can set something to activate only on red. So perhaps that's what this affects, is how often it checks the condition. So since I have no conditions set, it doesn't matter. That reset back to zero, so let me put that back to 15. Yep, you can see it says power 15. Okay, so let me try something. There's something called an advanced connector in XNet. I made five connector upgrade kits. Let's make this an advanced connector and see if that maybe gives me an option to make it pulse or something like that. Fancy. Okay, so connector itself, its options didn't change. Should give us something new in here, hopefully. No, so that doesn't do what I want it to do. It does give you more control over how often you do it. Well, that's odd. Before I could set it down to 10 ticks, now I <laughs> now I can't set it to 10. I can only set it to 20. It's supposed to make it so you can set it to like 10, right? Anyway, so I can't get it to pulse. All right, I want to test something. You don't have to only enable on color. You can also enable on redstone. I'm assuming that means external redstone and not some sort of sensor signal. So if that's true, then this should stop it. Yes. Oh, it actually connected to it. <laughs> I don't think the fact that it connected has anything to do with that. The fact that it's working. We can test this. Disable the side there. Yeah, nothing to do with it. You can see it's receiving power of 15, and when I break that, once it checks again... Um... Hmm? What the hell? Oh, on to activate. Does that mean it just will keep running forever as soon as it receives redstone? Or did I just have that reversed? I don't know, let's see. So, no power. Still receiving no power. Maybe it did need to connect. It did need to connect, okay. Okay, well, it does work. So I can use external redstone to determine whether I send a pulse or not. Which should be pretty valuable, because I'm going to be dropping a seed in front of this thing, and I want to detect when there's a seed there. I only want to send a pulse when there is a seed. 
All right, I've got an idea, but I'm not sure if it's going to work. So we have the Atomic Reconstructor, which at the moment is disabled when it receives a redstone signal. I also put an automatic precision dropper here. What this does is it just automatically drops everything inside of itself straight down. Fairly fast, too. It's also set to deactivation, so if both of these are receiving a redstone signal, they will not do anything. And these are the things that make stuff happen, right? If this thing drops seeds and this thing shoots the laser, then we get the crystallized canola seeds. And then this is just a range collector to collect the crystallized canola seeds, and then I just put them in this chest here. I opted to knock over XNet here just because I didn't want to overload and add a separate channel just for something as trivial as a range collector going into a chest. However, I do have a connector here because we're going to use the chest for some logic. We'll see how this works. My idea is that so long as this chest has less than a stack of crystallized seeds, yeah, as long as it has less than a stack of crystallized seeds, Rather, I, sh I should phrase that differently. If it has more than a stack of crystallized seeds, then it's going to activate a redstone signal on both of these, thereby stopping the production of more crystallized seeds. So in other words, if we want to have more crystallized seeds in this thing, if it has less than a stack, these things are not going to receive a redstone signal, and they're just going to do whatever they do. You know, I'm not exactly regulating exactly how many seeds are going to be dropped or exactly when this thing is going to shoot. I'm just going to say, you just start dropping, you just start shooting until we get over a stack. And you know, we'll probably overshoot it a bit, but that's fine. Yeah, um, actually, now that I've said that out loud, I'm pretty sure it will work. Just a matter of, will I set it up right? So for logic... I think we could put logic on any channel, right? Normally, if you're inserting and extracting, you have to put that all on the same channel. But for logic, I think you can, like for logic generation, not not using logic, but making logic, I think we can put that on any channel. And I don't think it has to be its own channel. Or does it? Oh, this is a logic channel, actually. So it does, doesn't it? Yeah, never mind. Yeah, you need a channel of logic, but I could put other logic on the same channel. Anyway. So what did I say before? Let's get rid of that. Let's disable this channel. So chest. Crystal canola chest, which is what I named it. So let's create a sensor. For crystallized canola seeds, I'm going to... Oh, that's off right now. So I'm going to sense for items. So when it detects... When it detects more than 64 crystallized canola it's going to output red how many colors are there uh, I'll just put I'll just output white I'll just keep incrementing it so first one will just be white next one will be red so when we have as many seeds as we want we're going to output white Okay, now, for the Atomic Reconstructor, we want an output. So this thing is going to enable on white. When it receives a white signal, it's going to output 15 redstone, thereby turning it off. And then we're going to do the same thing for the Crystal Canola Dropper. Output redstone signal of 15 when we receive white. Okay, that should work. So when I turn this on, it should start to shoot. And, and attempt to drop. Yep. Okay. Now let's transfer. That's going to get annoying real fast unless I set this up. Do I need a separate channel to transfer these seeds? 
think I do, don't I? I'm gonna make a new channel. So item channel, we're gonna extract from the, let me disable this, extract from the drawer controller. We're gonna extract canola seeds. Should I extract a stack? Yeah, that, uh, I don't wanna keep a huge amount because the dropper can hold a lot. I'll set it to a stack, but I'll say just keep 64 in there. Yeah. And then for the crystal canola dropper, we're going to insert. I'm also going to set it to 64, just for safety, I guess. Okay, now this should work. This should start to produce some... Wow, that was fast. So this thing should start to get them quite fast. And then once we reach over 64, again, there's going to be some carryover, but once we reach over 64, it should disable everything. And then we'll also get some additional ones. How's this thing doing on power? I don't know how much it takes to empower them. 300. Oh, it barely makes a dent. Oh, we're going to have a lot of carryover because this transfer node is not very fast, but all right, it should stop now. Power 15? Power 15! Oh my god, it worked! Ah, only problem is there is some wasted canola. Hmm. That's not that big of a deal. It will despawn. How much is it? Oh, I already had a stack. I didn't see how much it was. It just looked like maybe two. That's not a big deal. I could fix that. Yeah, I could fix that pretty easily, actually. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. So I can fix that by adding a filter for that here. On the whitelist, so it will pick up the canola seeds as well. And then I can set up some item filters. Like, I can grab another node. Feels weird to be using these extra utility transfer pipes, but for, like, super simple short-range travel like this, it's way easier than XNet's overkill. Especially because I'm trying to save on channel so I don't overload the network. Where's my item filters? Still have some, right? Yeah, got three. So I can fix that by doing that and then set up some item filters. So this one's only going to extract the crystallized canola. And this one's only going to extract the normal canola. This makes it a little bit more efficient. Not a huge deal. But no reason to be wasteful when it's so easy to fix. Yeah, you can see there's a lot of carryover. But if I take this out, it should start to produce again. What the hell am I seeing? Oh, it's picking them up. Ah, get rid of that. Huh, right. So I guess it's not going to work. There is, there is something that might be able to do it. I think there's a Batania flower that can pick items up, but only after a certain period of time. So it won't pick them up when they're just dropped. It kind of waits a little bit. But I don't think I can... I'm pretty certain I can't make that flower yet. And it's it's not a big deal. It's only a couple seeds. 55. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. That's a lot of seeds. I went from 55 to 64 and maxed out. Five seeds that time. That's significant. I don't like that. Hmm. 
Well, I'm going to leave the slight inefficiency of this thing, of just it leaving uh, canola seeds there for some other time to solve. Or maybe to never solve, because I'm thinking if I'm using stuff fast enough, which I probably will be, they might not even have time to despawn. Of course, it's not ideal to leave that up to chance, but whatever, it's not that big of a deal. Let's focus on the Empower, the other tier of seeds. So we have a lot of inter interdependency here because we need the crystallized canola seeds to upgrade the oil, but the empowered canola seed also needs the crystallized canola seed. So we need the crystallized canola seed for the oil and for the next tier of seed. Not that it's that big of a deal, but just a lot of interdependency. So I've got these all hooked up. Don't worry about the ugliness. I'm going to fix this at some point. So all the display stands and the empower are hooked up. What I want to see is, can I insert items into them? I don't know. I know you can insert items by clicking on them, of course. But can I insert items through the network? Let's find out. So... I guess I need to make another... Do I need to make another new channel? I'm extracting... What am I extracting from here? I'm extracting seeds. That's what I need. If I'm extracting seeds, I could try to insert... Yeah, all right, let's try this. So let's try to insert into the display stands on the same channel. Uh, let me disable this. Insert, and we only want to keep one. Not that it matters, I think, because I don't believe you can insert more than one item into a display stand. But yeah, just insert one. Okay, yeah, that worked. Beautiful. So I take it, should come back within a second. Cool. That's working. So I can be pretty sure then that inserting into the Empower is going to work as well, but the big question I have is can I take from the Empower? Because the manual says you can like click to get the items back, which you can, but can you also use a machine to do it? Hopefully. Let's find out. Oh, I'm going to need a new channel for this, right? Wait, actually, no. No, I can still use the same channel. Because we're going to be extracting from the crystal canola chest. Let me disable this again. We're going to extract from here. Mm, wait a second. I can use this channel, but I'm going to have to be careful to filter the display stands. Because if I'm extracting from the drawer controller seeds, and I'm extracting the crystallized seeds from here, then it's possible the crystallized seeds can end up being inserted to these, because these don't have a filter. I'm filtering the extract, but I'm not filtering the insert. Let me filter the insert for those. All right, now it should be fine. Okay, now we should be able to extract from here. Just to be completely safe, I guess I'll filter it. I shouldn't need to, because that should be the only thing that ends up in the in the chest, but eh, why not? So we just want to keep one in the destination inventory, not that it should matter, because again, it can only hold one at a time. Then down here, we want to insert one, and I'm going to filter for the crystallized. Okay, so now when I turn that on, it should insert, and once, you know, it, it's constantly checking to see whether it has a valid recipe, so once it gets it, it should do the zappy thing. So, just for the sake of testing, just for the sake of testing, let's make that go somewhere real quick. I'll just put a connector here. So I'm going to try to extract the end result from that thing into this chest. But first, let me turn it on for a sec. Oh, <laughs> did it behind my back. Oh, you can see how much power it used, too. Because I haven't connected these to power. They kept how much they had before. It really didn't use that much. It used 1,000 RF. That's not much at all. 
Okay, now I have one to use for a filter. Now I am going to have to make a new channel, right? Yeah, because now I need to extract from the Empower. Alright, channel 5. Item. Disable. So from the Empower itself, we're going to extract. Again, shouldn't matter, but why not? Let's put that in there. Extract from there, and where's my whatever chest? There's my whatever as Daggas. Insert. Again, I'll filter just for the sake of it. Okay. And I guess to make this stop, to make this process stop, I can just say the max amount in destination inventory. And therefore, when that's reached, it'll stop extracting from the Empower, and the Empower won't continue doing anything. Yeah, that'll work. So let's keep a stack. <laughs> yes, perfect. That's exactly how many I want to keep in there. Okay, now when I turn these on, it should just go. Ah. You can't extract from it, can you? Okay. I did set the up... I did set up the extract correctly, yes? From the Empower itself. Extract. Yep. Okay. So yeah, you cannot extract from this. Well, that's alright. I brought some mechanical users. Okay, so I've got a mechanical user here that's set to pick up whatever goes there. I've got it connected to the system. I've got this chest connected to the system, which I actually helpfully renamed Empowered Canola Chest. So now I want to set it up. I want to set it up so that this insertion only happens depending on a sensor on this chest. So I want the insertion to only happen if there's less than a stack of empowered canola seeds in this chest. Let's get that to work. We should be able to use the same logic channel. So we want to sense the chest, empowered canola chest, yes. Want to look for items. If there's... I'm not sure if this needs to be larger than or smaller than, but for now, if there's less than 64 empowered... Yeah, this is what I want. So if there's less than 64, that means we want to send out a signal. Let's send out red. And... In that case... That's when we want to do the insert. Oh, so we can just get rid of this extract channel, right? That was the one that didn't work. Yeah. Goodbye. So we only want this insert to happen in the case of red. Okay, and we also need to transfer from the empower right clicker, that's the mechanical user. We need to extract from there and we need to insert into the empower canola chest. Yep, that's good. I'll set this to a stack. Do I need to filter anything? If all my inserts are filtered, then I don't. Mm, the crystal canola dropper is not. Let's filter you. Man, look at all the stuff I've got going on on channel 4. Is this going to work? I don't know. Why to stop? Oh? Might have just been surfer lag. Wait, what? Uh oh, something's wrong. Something's definitely wrong. What did I do? That's getting the wrong type. I mean, it got a empowered canola seed. Where's the rest of them going? Didn't it just make a bunch? 
Oh. Oh, it's pulling them from the system before it can empower them. Shit. Oh man, how do I do this? How do you automate the empower? I need the mechanical user to only do this if the right item is here. I mean, I could use something like a checker. But... I, I don't know if I can check for what items in here. Can I? Let me try. I have an inventory checker. I don't know if this counts as an inventory. Let me put down some redstone. So we want to see when there's one empowered canola. For now, let me just disable this. Uh, redstone pulse? Sure. Okay, I hope this works. Oh, I can't place that. Alright, well that should be fine. Let's place this. Ooh! It does work! Yeah! Oh my god, the inventory checker is my savior. Beautiful! Okay, well this should be pretty easy then, to fix. We just want to leave this as it is, so we only want to click when redstone is on. Um, hmm, these cables are a little bit awkward. I guess I'll put some cobblestone here. Okay, let's try it. That might fix it. I still don't understand why crystallized canola seed was allowed to go in here. I thought I... I must have not filtered something quite right, so I still want to fix that. So we're inserting into the... Crystal... This one. Yeah, the empowered canola chest is set to only accept empowered canola. And this... Extract. Well, I didn't filter the extract, but it shouldn't matter, right? I don't know. Let's enable it, see how it goes. Oh, we have no grid power. It's nighttime. Uh, I really need to fix that. I need to make alternate sources of grid power from extra utilities other than solar panels. Daytime. Should work. There we go. Wait. What? Is it doing it again? Why are you doing that? You're not receiving a redstone signal. Uh, maybe it needs to match the metadata? Uh, I think that was it. Yeah, I think the canola seeds are technically the same. Yeah, they're the same item. It's the metadata that's different. If you notice, it says there's the, uh, I guess, <laughs> hashtag <laughs> waffle 4202. That's like the base item, I think. And if you notice, it's the same for all the seeds. It's only the slash something that's different. That's, I guess, the metadata. Okay, so I think it's good now. Oh, it's the same problem, isn't it? It is the same problem. I filtered for all these seeds, but I haven't filtered for the right thing. I need to do metadata matching. And I guess NBT? I don't think that matters. But yeah, I need to do NBT matching for everything. So none of these filters were working. It's kind of a miracle nothing stopped up. Yeah, look at that. Beautiful. And this is what's supplying the seed. Yep. So that's all working. Now, big question is, does it stop at a stack? Almost there. So it should stop inserting the center thing when it, when it gets to a stack. 
Or maybe one over a stack. Yep, one over a stack. And it no longer inserts the center thing if we remove one. Should insert it. Hmm. Oh, maybe that was just lag. Maybe it does need to be one below. Yeah. So it stops when there's one stack plus one, and then it starts again when there's 63. Beautiful. This is working out so well. So, I mean, we've got most of it. Well, I don't know about most of it. I guess there's a bit to do with the fluid placers, but we got kind of the building blocks of both things. Good. So we've got all the canola oil going and all the oil being processed. And we got both types of seeds that we need in chests right here. Crystallized and empowered. All automated. Now it's just a matter of combining the oil with fluid placers and stuff with the seeds to make the right type of oil. So I've got a basic setup going. I've got a automatic precision dropper to drop the seeds. I have a fluid collector to collect the final empowered oil. Fluid placer to place the normal oil before it's been empowered. And a sensor that eventually I'm going to configure to detect when we have the empowered oil because we only want the fluid collector to collect when it's been empowered, not just right after it's placed and it's still basic oil. Unfortunately, there's no filter for the fluid collector. There's going to be some problems and I'm not sure how to solve them, but let's set it up first and kind of get it going and get more of an idea about what's going on. I don't know if I need to make a new channel for this, but I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Let's make it a fluid channel. So we want to extract oil. Oh, we're going to need to extract from every one of the fermenting barrels, aren't we? Okay, <laughs> let me set this up. Alright, that's set up, so we're extracting from every one of the fermenting barrels. Into... Why is this one? I don't think this one's actually a controller. What? No, I'm pretty sure this is the one we want, even though it's giving the wrong description, because this one's also blank. And this is the collector, the fluid collector. Oh no. Collect empowered oil. Collect empowered. Why are there two versions of the connector? What? Do it double connections, or are there actually two connections? Oh, there's two connections. That's why. Okay. That makes more sense now. Still don't know what the hell that's about. But yeah, these are the ones we want. So for the fluid placer, I should disable this channel by the way. We want to insert and I should actually filter this just to make sure nothing goes wrong. So let's take a bucket of oil. There we go. So we only want just straight up oil. That should work, so that should place it. Yep, that's working, but unfortunately the fluid collector is collecting. Which is what I thought it would do. Um, well, we have to, I have to empower this to get a bucket of it so that I can put it into the sensor for the filter. So let's go ahead and do that. Take an extra one of you. I want to make sure I have kind of one of everything so I can put it into filters. So one of, one of you. That, that didn't work. No, that's not going to work. There we go. And there we go. I need to get rid of this oil. Dang. Uh, there. Hide my shame. Okay, so now we can put that in for the filter. So when it detects that there's empowered oil, it's going to send a signal. That's when we want to collect, which means we're going to need to invert this signal, because we want this thing to be deactivated when it's not receiving a signal. 
Yeah, so we're gonna need a inverter. As much as I hate redstone, we've done this before. I can make it work. I think we're actually gonna need a block there. So, what is it? This, and then that, and then that. Or does it need to be like that? Yeah, I think it needs to be like that. Okay, so this rest of the signal is going to be on until this gets turned to the correct thing. Nah, I guess I'm going to use up my last crystallized canola. That's fine. Then it should try to collect it. It won't be able to because it's full, but this should flip. And it did. Excellent. So now that it's no longer receiving a redstone signal, it should collect it. And therefore, it should take it in. So much wasted oil. Not that it matters, but... Uh. Okay, so that's all absolutely fantastic. Like, that's almost the whole thing solved. But, one obvious problem. How the fudge do I get it to drop exactly one empowered canola so it, uh, seed? And exactly one crystallized canola seed. How do I do that? I don't know how to do that. I don't think I can really do that with an automatic precision dropper, to be frank. I think I need something else. I need it to drop exactly one of each, and then just wait. This thing is just going to spew them all over the place. And as much as I don't mind wasting possibly a little bit of the basic seeds, I really don't want to waste the crystallized ones, and especially the empowered ones. Because the empowered ones take a lot of seeds. I don't want to waste them. I mean, if they happen to be sitting there and more oil was placed, I guess they'd probably go to use again. They would probably go to use before despawning, just like these probably will, but these ones are too precious, especially the empowered ones. I want to do this a better way, and I don't know how. So I think I'm going to look at some items and just see if I can figure out something that maybe drops in a more controlled manner than the automatic precision dropper. Alright, this might actually be able to do what I want it to do, the automatic precision dropper. So I hooked up the redstone signal from the sensor to the precision dropper. So when we have the the finished oil, basically, the placer, the fluid collector is enabled because it's not receiving a redstone signal. So when the oil is complete, this thing will collect. However, when the oil is complete, the sensor will be active, which means the precision dropper will be deactivated. So when the oil is complete, we want to collect it and we don't want to drop any more seeds. That all sounds great. I've set it up so it inserts one crystallized canola seed and one empowered canola seed and it keeps only one in at all times, so if I take these it'll put them back in. That's great, but the question is what's going to happen when I start this? That is, when I remove this and the signal changes, then this thing's going to drop and all sorts of stuff is going to happen. I don't think it's going to do what I want it to do. Pretty sure it's going to be messy. Let's find out. Yep. So what I was afraid of, it dropped way too many. How many did it drop? Four, four. Oh crap. <laughs> I don't even know if I can get him. Uh, oh, if I break this, the fluid's gonna move. Oh, that's fine. 4-4. Four, four. So I dropped two extra crystallized, but no extra empowered? Yeah, that's not okay. Hmm. I don't know what to do. Okay, I've got some tools that might help. The first thing I'm going to try is just a really simple and kind of dumb solution, and it probably will have problems. But let's just try it. So first thing I'm going to test is, the issue is that it continues to receive a signal. Actually, I don't think this is going to work at all <laughs> now that I think about it. Let me just try it. I was thinking, what if I just delay the signal? I really don't think it's going to work. But let's just try it. I don't know if that connects. I've never used a repeater before, to be honest. It's actually a vanilla Minecraft thing. Ew, vanilla Minecraft. Gross. 
Uh, oh crap. Whoops. My bad. Um. Let me just disable this for now. That's the one, right? Yes. So let's try a redstone repeater like that. Uh, we gotta go like this, I think. And I think we're gonna need multiple of them. So, by default, they're set to repeat the signal or delay it by one tick, two ticks, three ticks, or four ticks. Remember, 20, tick, 20 ticks is one second. So I'm going to set each one to max just to make it kind of long. I'll just do one more. Yeah, that makes absolutely no difference. That's what I thought. It All it does is just delay the problem a little bit longer. That definitely does not do what I want it to do. Well, I'm going to leave this episode on a bit of a cliffhanger, because I've been recording for almost four hours, and I think I just need to think about this problem some more. But I am super happy with what I've accomplished so far. It's looking great. Everything seems really efficient. And for the most part, really well designed, aside from a little bit of waste here. Just got to figure this part out, and then I'll be done. Pretty much. And then after that, just extract from the fluid collector and take it into the generators. And that's pretty much it. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I'm going to try to figure out the problem of how to drop two items, and no more than two items, 